Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Well, once again, I have teamed up with Carolina Craftsman Kits and together we have come up with a very large kit called Eagle's Landing. And today I'm going to show you how to build it. Uh, now in the video you're about to watch, um, I am building two at the same time. Uh, I was building this one and then I'm building another one that is for shows. So, well, let's head over to the workbench and get started. Okay, so we're going to start with this structure right here on the end. It is called Millie's Seafood. So here are the wall sections and the first thing I did was I lifted some of the clapboard. Then after they were all done I flipped them over and put bracing on them. So for the tall wall the bracing goes all the way to the edge on both sides. Then there's a short wall opposite. I moved the bracing in on both sides. So then on these, the bracing goes all the way to the edge on the short side. And on the taller side, you have to move the bracing in. Okay, now we'll get started on painting the walls. Okay, so we're gonna put a blue stripe across the, the lower part of the walls. And I'm using turquoise blue and Blue Harbor and it's probably going to be 50 50. Now we're going to want to drag our brush very lightly across it. You're almost dry brushing. This gives it a peeled paint effect. We can also use a sponge. Next, we're going to paint the top section of the wall and we're going to use sand gray. And we're just going to use the same exact technique. Okay, I'll hold it up. I don't know if you'll be able to tell. Okay, so all of our painting is done. Now we're gonna put a wash 
over these walls. And we're going to use raw umber and black. Very little black. Really not, not a lot of paint, but a lot of water. So you can see I just put a little bit of black in there. It doesn't take much to darken a color. Okay, then we're going to test it on the back to see. Okay, I like that. Okay, so the walls are done. If you find that they are slightly bowing, I don't know if you can tell, it's very little, very little. What we can do is take our water, our water is dirty, but that's okay, and just wet the back. Now, if they're really curling, you're going to want to wet them more um, so that it sort of corrects it. But these aren't bad, so I'm just going to lightly, lightly wet the back of them. Okay, and already you can see that it has taken care of that slight curve, so now it is flat. Okay, now I am going back in with sand gray and lightly going over some of the boards. Not all of them, just some of them. Using the same technique I did when I first applied it. And you can dab it. You could even go in with a sponge again. Hopefully that's showing up. This really does give it a layered, even more of a peeled paint look to it. This process does take a while, but I'm happy with the overall effect of it. So I sprayed all of my doors and windows with a gray primer. Now I'm going to put a wash over these of Fawn. And we're trying to duplicate the color of the bare wood. I think I'm going to mix a little bit of the raw umber in with it. So I am painting my corner trim. And then next we'll use the same blue on the doors and windows. And then all of this gets that wash put over it of uh, raw umber and black. So we're not painting it solid, we're just using the same technique as we did on the clapboard walls. Okay, all of our blue is done and now I've mixed up a little bit more of our wash, which again is raw umber and black and a lot of water. Now we'll put the same wash over all of our doors and windows. Now the reason there's so many doors and windows is because, uh, if you remember at the beginning, I said that I am making two of these at the same time. Okay, so I've cut my corner trim and now we'll get that glued on. Okay, so I'm making sure that all of my windows fit in place first, and then I'll cut my acetate for the back of them. Okay, and there's a small window here, and this gets a door. Here, I'll show you. So we'll paint that blue, and put that right there. Okay, for my acetate, I cut it the exact size of the opening. And then I just put a small dot of glue. I actually used super glue. Very small dot at the top and a small dot at the bottom. 
and then just drop it on there. Now, again, I'm just going to put a small drop on the top and a little drop on the bottom and put it in place. Okay, so we've got all the windows glued in. Now, we'll take some of the uh, paper that's meant for tar paper roofing. Uh, you can use any paper that you want. Um, this was a paper that came with another Carolina Craftsman kit. Um, so I'm just going to use this and we'll quick cut some shades. Okay, then we'll just use our white Elmer's glue. So I'm about to glue my walls together and I noticed that it's about an eighth too tall, the center wall. Yours might not be when you buy it. Um, if so, all you got to do is simply cut it, uh, which I'm about to do. Okay, I cut mine a little bit at an angle because that roof card comes down. Okay, that works. Great, and let's see. This one, yeah. I can file that a little bit. It's a little tall. You always want to do just a little bit at a time. You don't want to risk taking too much off. So I've got my walls glued together and then I put in some strip wood for bracing for the card cardstock that goes on the roof. Okay, we're going to take a little break from the structure and work on the signs that hang off of the side of the building. And we're going to make two of them. So, this is how you want to cut them out. And then, we're going to simply fold those. And they're going to hang from a post that sticks out from the building. Uh, like that. So we're going to put wire. If we can see that. We're going to put that wire through there. Right to the bottom of the sign. And leave some of it sticking out the top. So. The wires. And we're going to do one on this side. One here and one here. The wires are five eighths of an inch long. Five eighths. Our post is one and a quarter. And the, uh, the wire is so thin that I'm just cutting it with a straight blade. And then I need a total of four pieces of wire. I want these to look like metal signs. If you want them to look like wood signs, you could cut them and glue some cardboard the same shape in between them. Something that's kind of thick uh, so that it would look like a wood sign hanging. So I'm going to use raw umber and some pastels and first we're going to start actually with the pastels so i have a rust color 
and we're just pulling it down in one direction starting from the top of the sign dragging it down okay I'll show you what this looks like now we're going to take a sponge you want to dab a lot of the paint off start out very very lightly now we don't want to do too much because we don't want to cover up the lettering we still want to be able to read it I'll show you these up close We'll flip these over and we're gonna glue in the wires. Okay, so I just smeared the glue, trying to get it even. This will be the tricky part. <laughs> okay, now we will take a brush. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the edge of the paper. And we can even paint the wire. So if you don't have a, a small drill, you can see what I'm doing right here is just putting the end of my knife, making a slit so those wires can fit up in there. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of super glue very carefully because you don't want to bend that wire. I am making the second sign and I found that if you after you put your Elmer's glue on there just put some super glue right over the top of that wire and then simply fold it over all right and again now you've got your wire sticking out of the top and now we'll paint the edge of the paper with raw umber. And we'll paint that wire too. Okay, here's where we're at so far. Um, in hindsight, I should have made these posts um, a little bit longer. So I think I made them an inch and a quarter. I would definitely go an inch and a half. Uh, and then drill a hole and put that in there and then you can glue them um, from the back side with some super glue but these were an inch and a quarter and they'll work I mean they're strong they're not going anywhere and as you can see I've got my signs all put on there and then part of this is just decorative I wanted it to look like the front of a ship but part of it I need um, there's a pulley we're gonna put a pulley hanging down right here from the bottom of this and then put a rope next to this little door that opens so that stuff can be lowered all the way down to the bottom or raised up to this door. But I do like the front of that. Uh, I think it just adds a little extra touch to it. And I just used some of the corner trim, two pieces, Cut the front of it at an angle. Okay, next we'll... I already painted the uh, pieces brown to make it look like rust. And now we'll very carefully cut out our little pieces for the pulley. So next we're going to start to put our shingles on. and. 
This is what the shingles look like when you get the kit. So I took some brown spray paint and misted. I didn't do an even coat. Um, I sort of did stripes. Now I'm taking some gray pastels and again doing stripes. Now don't worry, there won't be a repeat pattern because once we cut these all out, we'll stagger them. And if you want, I suppose we could take maybe some Mississippi mud. The more texture we can add to these, uh, the better they're going to look. Okay, so as you can see, I have this side all glued on. Now we're going to go through and lift some of the shingles. And we're going to start at the top and work our way down. So I mixed slate gray and fawn together. And now we're just going to dry brush our roof. Okay, this one is done. Okay, I want to show you my technique for um, staining the piers and I'll kind of give you a close-up of this one that's done so as you can see it's pretty beat up so if you have a wire brush go with the grain go with the lines okay then with my file I want to do it where you can see it Okay, then with the knife, we're going to carve away the edges. This will help give the illusion that the boards aren't so thick. We're kind of thinning out the edge. And then you can carve, carve away some of the boards. Then, we're just going to put some cuts. You can put some deep ones right in the edge. Now, if you have a newer um, layout or diorama that you're building, you don't have to do this step. As all of you know, I like my stuff pretty beat up and old looking okay now we're ready to stain it I have mixed up a pretty good batch of stain so that I can do all of the wood that goes under it and the pilings okay then at the same time we're going to do the underside And uh, as you can see, I'm not soaking it. There's no like puddles forming on it. Now, if you want to, you can take the hair dryer and dry it. And if you start to see it curling, you can kind of bend it with your fingers and, and dry it at the same time. Um, this is... This is doing pretty good. This one you can see it's curled a little bit. You can always re-wet the bottom and blow dry it to try to straighten it. But again, don't soak the wood. 
you can always straighten it. Okay, as these dry, very carefully you want to keep bending them in the opposite direction that they are curling in. And you just want to keep doing that very carefully. You don't want to break it. Okay, now I'm going to take uh, maybe a little black, dark brown, and just brushing on the pastel. And if you want to take some gray, even some light gray, and take some really dark, even a black pastel, I'm just brushing on the black right on to the ends. You don't have to worry too much about the center because the building sits in the center of these. Okay, so I've stained all of the strip wood and as it's drying, I'm flipping it over. Warping is always an issue when you get wood wet. The key is to not get it soaking wet. Put a thin layer of stain on it and like I'm doing here, I'm just rotating it. So the pieces were starting to curl this way. And so all I'm doing is flipping them over because they're damp. They're all damp on this side. You can see how they're dark in spots because it's wet. So now as that dries, they should curl this way a little bit or at least straighten out. And then same with our stair stringers. We just got to keep rotating them. I think too many times, um, I know in the past, when I first started modeling, I would panic and think, oh my gosh, they're going to warp. I'm not going to be able to fix it. I'd soak the other side. Then they would start to warp that way. Then I'd soak the other side so they curl the other direction. And pretty soon the wood would just get too wet and it's ruined at that point. So the key is to not panic and just let it slowly dry. And again, you can, as a piece, if you notice a piece is drying and it's starting to curl, flip it over. Another good trick if you're trying to get stuff to dry is completely cover it with your hand and press down. Your skin acts like a sponge and it soaks up a bunch of the water. You can see. And then flip your pieces over, lay them down, and do the other side. And it slowly sucks the moisture out of the wood. So I took one of the decks, which is four by six, and I traced it. I then made a pattern of where my pilings will go and where my cross sections go. So from the center, it is one and three eighths. Then from the center on these, um, one and a quarter. So there's one and three eighths to the center of all these and then one and a quarter to the center going this direction and i probably came in about an eighth on the ends and then started it um, now we're going to have to cut 
the pilings that go underneath and we have 10 that go underneath and then the we have 10 that go on the outside that stick up um, above the deck okay I quick measured it and yes it's an inch and a half so all the little ones that go underneath the deck all have to be cut to an inch and a half. Next, I cut all my boards that go this direction. And these are three and seven eighths. You'll need 10 of those. Next, I'm gonna cut this pattern out so that I can draw some of the lines onto my wood decking. Okay, here's my wood deck. Make sure you flip it upside down. And I'm just putting marks where those boards go. Now, if you want to, you could put little marks so you know how far um, it hangs over. Um, I'm just gonna kind of guess. And as you can see, I am using super glue. I'm using super glue because I want it to hold it completely flat so that it's not warped at all. And you'll notice I'm not doing the second one right next to it because we'll put our pilings in there next and then after those are in place we'll put our second board right up against those now with our pilings we want to make sure that they're nice and flat okay the bottom is all done i take that back <laughs> next i have to glue in my second pieces I don't always use the uh, super glue because it's a little more expensive. Um, it's actually probably a lot more expensive than white Elmer's glue. And these don't need to be as strong. Uh, the first ones that we glued down, I needed those to be strong to hold it perfectly flat. And remember when you're gluing these that you don't have to put your glue all the way to the end of them. Because they hang over. Okay, now, now it is finished. Now we'll cut these to length and put those in there. So I've got an HO scale figure. And I'm going to cut these at about where his elbow would be. And then the rope will be more at the waist. And I'll measure this quick for you. It is two and one sixteenth. So all these on the outer edge will be two inches and a sixteenth. Okay, so I've got them all cut. And on the tops of these, you might want to round the edges a little bit. Okay, there's the front side, and I'll show you what it looks like with the building on it. The building's not all done yet, but it's close. Now, if you wanted to, if you have some extra pieces, um, I'll quick show you. You can cut the point off of these, and then we'll round the top a little bit. And you can glue these onto the front of one of those. Maybe I'll do every other one. And then we'll wrap rope around them. Okay, so I just added some rope. And all I did was I put a dot of the uh, super glue on the back side. Hold the end of the rope there until it dries. Wrap it around, go to the next one, wrap it around, put a little dot of glue on the back, 
wrap it around. I wrapped it around three times on each one. And then just put a little dot of super glue right on the back side. And then same with the pilings down here. I'll show you up close. So I just finished staining some more of the pilings and I simply use raw umber and water and just brush it on and let them dry. Well, I'm going to take a quick break and scrub my mat with some hot soapy water get a little more coffee and then we'll get back to work okay now we are moving on to this structure right here it sits right next to the one we were just working on and this one has a structure on the top and then a structure below um, below the deck now i mixed up a stain i used raw umber burnt umber zinc, any dark gray would work, and then a little bit of black. So I mixed it in here. You can see a lot of water. I brushed over the walls, going the same direction as the clapboard, not going heavy, not soaking it, just doing a thin layer over all the walls. Let them dry completely. I then, with the same wash, did the same wash over it again. So this has two coats on it. Now, I told you that I am building two of these complete structures at the same time. I'm uh, making the second one look older. So what I did was... I put two coats on this, but then after it dried, I went over it a third time. And then as it was, or while it was still wet, I would dip my brush into the raw umber and the dark gray. And just very quickly went over some individual boards, just real quick. So now I am doing some dry brushing. So you want to get most of the paint off of your brush and lightly brush over the walls. And I'm using slate gray. Okay, so I got all the windows and trim painted and got all the walls glued together. So these go like this um, with a deck in between them. So for the bottom part, it's pretty simple. There's three separate sections. And then there's two separate doors that get glued in place. And then this is just a, a simple piece of cardboard that I put in there. And I created a sign in the computer. This will come with the kit. Then for this one, I decided to paint this section all green and again I created uh, a sign in my computer and that will come with the kit all these signs will come with the kit so as I mentioned I am building two of these so this one is a little newer maybe a little more uh, modern looking This one's a little rougher. I used a darker stain on it. Um, instead of gluing the signs directly onto the building, I had them hanging. And they should roughly be about the same size. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I've started my deck and just like on the last one, um, I did the same thing, used my same pattern, 
this one I'm going to have to measure to figure out exactly where to put this because there's a staircase that gets put on here. For this it's good to have something that is square. Once you get your structure where you want it then you can set your your deck on top. Uh, we don't want to glue it yet because we have to put our pilings in place and they run the full the full length. After we get these glued in place, we'll take the top deck off and we're going to put rope all along the bottom level. Then we can glue this on. Uh, we have these wood supports all have to be glued in place underneath the top deck. Then we can get everything glued in place and then we'll put rope across the top deck. Next I'm building some stairs for the model and I'm using a stair jig from Carolina Craftsman Kits. Makes it very easy. So you just simply take your stair stringers, put them in the grooves. I have to trim mine a little bit. You can make them shorter. You don't have to make it quite this long. And then we'll put a dot of glue on the tops. <laughs> it's a bit of a struggle until you get a couple boards put in place. I put quite a bit of glue on there. You could just simply put a little dot of glue on, on the bottom of the stairs if you want. So as you can see, it goes pretty fast. Let me see if I can pick it up and show it to you. Makes building stairs very easy. And again, you can buy these separately from Carolina Craftsman Kits. Next, we're gonna glue this structure in place. And it is an inch and a quarter from the edge. We'll put a couple little marks. Then I counted one, two, three, four and a half boards. One, two, three, four, four and a half boards on each side. So you just want to make sure that it's centered. And we'll just put a little mark up here in the corner so we know that it's lined up. Now I did put in the um, fishing ads and they'll be in the kit. So... Now you could paint the inside black, but it'll be dark. It's, you're not going to be able to see the inside. Now any extra glue we can just clean up. Okay, this one is finished. I've got my railings put on. So this sits here and then this sits next to it. Then you can simply put some planks in between them. 
I used a scrap piece of the decking, but what I recommend is using this, which is the wood that's meant for the, uh, the treads on the staircase. Maybe put three or four of those together side by side and, and then glue that in place. But either way, if there's extra wood, uh, make it out of scrap pieces or just use a little extra piece of the decking. Either way. You'll notice the water tower on here. Um, it is a separate little kit that is included. Uh, I have to put the ladder on mine yet. But it's very simple. Very simple instructions. I did put some barnacles on the pilings and I have a separate video on how I do that. You can see I put in a, a center post. You can see the supports. Uh, they don't run the full length like these do. Um, I cut them so they butt up against the side of the structure. Okay, next we're moving on to this structure right here. The bottom is going to be a barber shop and the top is going to be a bar. So here are all the parts. Here is the bottom structure, the barber shop, and all these parts up here are for the bar. The only piece that um, you have to be careful with is this one right here. It's kind of fragile. And after you get it painted and you're bracing, uh, we're unable to brace the back of it, but we'll put our trim, which is a 16th inch trim, down each side. And then once that dries and you've got it painted, cut the bottom off. You don't need the bottom part. It just goes like that. Because that fits in at an angle between these two pieces. So as you can see, you don't need that bottom section. I have all of my walls braced. So on the bottom, the two long walls, I moved the bracing in the thickness of the, uh, the wood, which I believe is an eighth of an inch. And then on the side walls, I put the bracing all the way to the edge. On these, you can see I move them in. And then on all the other walls, the side walls, I put it all the way to the edge. Okay, for the first layer, I used slate gray and just took a brush and did a combination of brushing it on and dabbing it. I left quite a bit of the raw wood showing. Okay, I just mixed up a stain of raw umber and water and brushed it over. Now what I forgot to do is lift some of the clapboard. So I'm gonna do that and then uh, probably do another stain over it. Okay, so I've lifted some of my boards. Now I'm going back over it with the stain. And I wanted to show you this because, um, let me get it on camera here. I hold the wall upside down so that that stain goes into those cracks where I lifted the boards. Now uh, it'll dry lighter. Um, um, I'm okay if it actually stays dark. Okay, the second wash is completely dry. Now I'm going to go back in with the slate gray and I'm using a very fine brush 
and we're going to paint some individual boards. A good tip to keep your brushes nice and have a nice point on it is to never never get more than that much paint on it never get the paint up on to the metal uh, only load it about halfway so the bristles are half loaded with paint if you always do that it'll hold its shape so I have a couple brushes that I only load it halfway and they really hold its shape and it's great for painting little detail castings the majority of my brushes I treat pretty bad but there are a few that I keep really nice so real quick I wanted to show you that I finished painting some of the individual boards with the little brush and then I took pale gray and using a wide very soft brush I just did some dry brushing over it not much just a little bit especially towards the top where the overhang is and there's a little overhang right here so this wall is complete and I'll show you the two together so that you can see the difference well as you can see I've got quite a bit of work done I glued the walls together and put in all the the windows and the trim I uh, put the shingles on and now what we'll do is we'll go and we'll just lift a bunch of them and then after we get it to a point where we are happy with it we'll put some pastel chalks on there and do some dry brushing I'm going to do that later. First, I'm going to show you the uh, deck that this sits on. And then that'll get put on there just like that. Then we have a staircase that we have to build that gets put on here. And then we have railings that get put on here. So now I can take my rope glue it and wrap it around go to the next one wrap it around then glue my deck on top i'll show you quick how i'm going to do the rope again using super glue we'll just hold it there until it sets up for a little bit Put a dab of glue on the back. <laughs> it does take some patience. Now I do have a little HO scale figure. Just want to make sure that it's at the correct height. We'll put a dab of super glue on the back. So to figure out where to put the structure on the bottom, I put the top deck on, it's just sitting there, it's not glued, and I also set this on and lined it up. And then just kept turning it and making sure that everything was centered and evenly spaced. I think I have one two three four five planks on this side one two three four five five planks on both sides of the structure and then 
from the edge to the structure is I believe about five eighths. Okay, so once you're happy with the placement, then very carefully remove that, hold the structure on the bottom, then with a uh, very sharp pencil, mark your corners. Okay, now we'll just simply take some white glue and we just want to lightly dab it just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Make sure it's lined up on your marks. Also make sure that the front door is facing the right direction. Make sure you're not gluing it on backwards unless you want it facing the other way. So I've got my white glue on there. Now you'll notice I have some more supports to cut and glue on there. So now I can just mark it, cut it, and glue them in. And then I have a long one to glue in on this side. Then we can put our rope around the top. So I cut and glued on all the supports. Then I mixed up a stain of raw umber in black and a bunch of water and then painted the ends of that wood. So I'm gluing on the railings. I just wanted to show them to you quick. So I just put a little bit of super glue on the ends and hold them there for a second until they set up. And then we'll put one long piece of strip wood across the whole length uh, to tie them together. Now I'm doing the other side. So I've got one in place. This one I need to cut the third post off and glue it right up against the other one. Now this is the same exact staircase that's on uh, the other model that we just finished. So everything is exactly the same. So all I'm going to do is cut one post completely off. So we'll put some glue on the bottoms and on the ends. Okay, my railings are done. You can see I put in a little piece there. I put in a straight piece of rope right there. You could also put in just a piece of wood if you wanted to. You could make an X, uh, just make it look like they repaired it like maybe a, the railing broke and they had to put in a cross piece just to cover that okay all that's left is to build our staircase and glue it on well as you can see my stairs are done and i built them using the jig just like the last set 
Um, the stairs themselves are extremely easy to build. And then gluing them in place, very easy. The difficult part is the railings. And it really just takes patience and slowly trimming it here and there. Um, the railings on this one don't match the railings on the other one, but that's okay. No one's going to compare the two. So don't be too concerned about making it perfect. Um, these are, it ended up being a little bit crooked, but I wanted it to line up with the railing at the top. So it's a little taller at the bottom than it is at the, the top here. Um, but don't over concern yourself with making it perfect. You certainly can. You could spend an entire day doing the railings and the stairs and making it perfect. You really could. And uh, <laughs> I tend to get in a little bit of a hurry. And uh, I'm just like, ah, that's, that's good enough. And I think it looks good. I'm happy with it. Okay, now we need to build a little platform up here to make a crow's nest. Put some little railings on it, a ladder going down, and possibly a little deck here. So they would have access possibly from the window. They would come out the window onto the deck, go up the ladder, go up the ladder all the way to the peak, and into the crow's nest. Well, this one is all finished. Let me show you up close. Again, I have a separate video on um, putting barnacles on pilings, so be sure to check that out. It's pretty delicate. You can see I added a board there like it had been uh, repaired. Little things like that add a lot of character to a structure. And then I took a sharp number two pencil and put nail holes in the boards. Hopefully that's showing up. Um, I made a little platform there. Pretty easy, uh, the three Posts that hold it up are the same size as the posts that you use um, underneath. I just noticed I need to add a couple more posts underneath that run all the way through. Um, and then the, the boards that support the planks on the top are boards same size as I used on the stairs. And the railing is, you'll get railings in the kit, and so you just cut a section and cut some smaller sections for the ends. Um, you'll get the uh, ladder in the kit. And then you have to build another deck for the top. And again, same size posts that we used underneath the, uh, the piers. That piece right there, same size. And then the pieces that go this way are the same size as the steps. So you can see I added a beer sign. The beer sign will be in the kit and it looks like this. 
So when you cut it out, leave the center connected so that you can just simply fold it and then put two wires down in it. So put your glue on there and I actually used um, super glue for the wire. I put some super glue on the wires, laid it flat. I think I made them close to an inch long and then fold it over, hold it down for a little bit and then you'll just have two wires sticking out. Then take a paintbrush and paint the edges of the paper uh, a dark brown, like a burnt or raw umber. And then for your post, um, cut a piece, paint it your trim color, poke two little holes so that the wires can go in it. Okay, now we'll move on to the last structure that sits next to this, which is a small gas station for the boats. And here's our gas station. <laughs> All finished, like magic. Uh, it's very easy, very easy construction to put that little building together. Um, and then you can see I made one long piling and put a gooseneck lamp on it and some signs. Added lots of signs to the little structure. I'll give you a close up on the sign on the roof. It's the same on both sides. And there's just three pieces of strip wood. And then I glued the sign to both sides of it. And then just glued the whole thing onto the roof. I made this entire dock sit a little bit lower. You can certainly make it the same height. Um, I just made it just a little bit lower um, so it's easy for the boats. And I'll put some ladders going from the top down, probably in, in these two corners. And it does come with a nice gas pump. Um, I think the one in the kit will be like a white resin. And we'll just glue that. We'll paint this uh, red and white to match the building and glue it right there. And then We will put a couple ramps. So I'll put a ramp there. And put a ramp over on this side right there. So, darn it. So uh, there'll be two ramps coming down connecting these. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the second kit. Now, of course, after I get these in place on the layout, I will add figures, um, details, crates, lobster traps, maybe some netting, hanging, um, as many details as I possibly can. And I think it'll really bring this to life. Okay, I painted the uh, gas pump, so I just wanted to show it to you quick. And you could add some black thread to it 
to make the hose. Uh, I would make it pretty long so that it's able to service boats down in the water. And again, I'll be adding lots of details to this. Figures, uh, maybe some netting, some buoys hanging on the side of the building. Um, whatever I can add to it to really bring the scene alive. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Building Eagle's Landing is uh, a very fun project. Uh, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of time. As you can see, it's a very large kit. So the two structures here are one kit, and then the two structures right here in front are a separate kit. Uh, so you can order them separately or order all four together in one large kit. And again, it is from carolinacraftsmankits.com. And if you do order the kits and you have any questions at all while putting it together, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, you can contact me through YouTube, Facebook, Messenger, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions regarding assembling this. Well, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, happy modeling, everyone.